everybody that are coming to live, spreading coffee. Got my coffee here. Ah, Got to make this a really quick one um, because I am currently getting a, a, a certificate or being certified, sorry, a certified um, trainer for tobacco prevention. <laughs> Uh, for behavioral health specialists. So there you go, <laughs> my day job. <laughs> um, just life is interesting, isn't it? People interesting. Um, you know, it's kind of funny because um, the internal, good morning, Prophet Jack. Um, internally, what is going on with me um, is the sort of uh, <laughs> grouchy, <laughs> grouchy Natalie, which, um, you know, tends to happen usually when my iron's low. It's amazing how chemicals in our body um, can actually have an impact on the mind and the way that we move through the world. That's why I pay attention to my health and pay attention to what goes into my body because believe it or not, we are what we eat. And when we eat things or if we don't take care of our health, um, there is a consequence and a response to how we engage in the world. And so it's pretty interesting because been I kind of been feeling um, this dialogue that's going on in my head. It's like this little grumpy old, I want to say grumpy old man. <laughs> It's like a grumpy old man. It's not even a grumpy old lady. It's a grumpy old man, um, you know, and it's kind of funny and it's there, um, you know, kind of gnawing at me and I'm going like, what is this and what is the dialogue? And so it's interesting because um, are you a woman of God? Yes, we are all children of God. <laughs> Everybody is. So thanks for the question. Um and, and it's interesting because the um, what I'm doing right now is looking into to Carl Jung. I've never looked at his work, um, and I, you know, people used to always say, "Oh, have you heard of him?" And really, all I thought was that he was a psychologist. I didn't really. There was something. There was never this um, desire within me to look into the works of Carl Jung, um, and or Freud or any of that. And I really didn't because I didn't realize that they knew spiritual alchemy. In my opinion, they were just scientific people who, um, you know, were professors of psychology who talked about the mind, um, but not necessarily the soul. And um, lo and behold, I was incorrect. Um, and so because I'm in a um, program of transformative and consciousness studies, um, starting to find out what Young did with his works. Now I'm diving into his works um, and what I'm noticing is that he's a spiritual alchemist, which I didn't know. I had no clue, had no idea. And so I'm starting to look at the way that he mapped out the soul because in his mind, there was a map of the soul. And for me, I don't agree with him 100% on all of the way he mapped the soul out so far. Um, he's missing big components from my perspective. Now, that doesn't mean that he's right, wrong, good or bad, or I'm right, wrong, good or bad. But from the way that I engage the world, I feel like there's pieces missing. That if I were to dive into his work fully, that I wouldn't get the whole entire picture. Um, that there would be pieces that would keep me from truly transcending, right? And so for me, I'm starting, and I could be wrong because I just dove into it. Um, but we have these individuals who are trying to analyze what this man did. And for for now, hundreds of years, I think it's hundreds of years. I could be wrong. <laughs> it could be the wrong number. I'm just throwing numbers out there, by the way. Do not take that for fact. But people are analyzing his work at this point because in psychology, he made a huge impact. Um, and psychiatry. And he went in there and he did shadow work, dream work, um, and he brought into the, the, the arts um, how to dive into that shadow, right, or dive into the dreams and how to look at um, the soul and understand it. Um, and mostly because he thought he was going crazy, right? He thought he was um, 
well, they say he was could have been schizophrenic, so he thought he was crazy. Well, that's kind of what happens, right? For me, I'm on this journey to understand my own self, right? It's my own personal journey. I didn't go to school to try to understand somebody else. I'm going to school to try to understand me and, and get get a, a true kind of picture, depiction of who I am. So one thing that I do like that he said is that everything starts with a with a sort of a picture, right? Good morning, Suzanne. And that there's this sort of picture that um, we extrapolate from our, our mind. They're like images that show up and mandalas can be part of that, right? So we look at the mandalas. I was talking about vibrational frequency and patterns that show up, but we ourselves have a map within us, which is kind of cool. And the map that we, we carry within us is really sort of the, the construct, the model of how our soul operates internally. It's kind of cool. Now, is that same map the same for everybody? That's the question. Because here people are trying to analyze his map of the soul instead of trying to find out their own map. What is your map? What is the map of your soul? How does that look internally for you? Again, we have people looking on the outside instead of looking on the inside. And that is the problem. Not the problem. I don't want to say the problem. Sorry. That is the problem. <laughs> uh, there's the grumpy old man putting judgment on everything. Okay. So, again, Spirit and Coffee isn't about judgment, but Natalie, yeah, she's human. So, but okay. So, if we don't call it the problem, we can say that is the conundrum for people. People feel like they're missing something. People don't know how to tap in. They're lost. They feel like they can't find their way. They're in a maze. Well, the reality is they're in the maze of their own soul map. And they don't know how to read it. That's it. You've got to learn to read yourself. You've got to learn to understand who you are. Know thyself and you shall come to know me, right? And because I know myself, I know you. And because you know yourself, you know me. That's where those that understanding comes from, because there's this internal map and there's a depiction of what it looks like. And if you study yourself enough and you go internally enough, you will start to get a map of what your internal world looks like. Once you have that map, you can maneuver through that map. It's the hidden map within. But rather than me going to analyze somebody else's soul map, which I could look at and see commonalities, but I'm going to say that there's tons of stuff in there that I don't necessarily agree with because it doesn't strike true for me because I know myself. So while he was treating patients, he was actually treating himself and he was telling people here's what internally it looks like now is that bible no is it truth no there is no absolute truth in the work that he did there's no capital t on the truth but there's his truth in the way that he saw the world you guys have your own internal map you guys can tap into that internal map but it takes a lot right it's like, how do I construct a map? So think about it from this perspective. We're going to go to the external, not within the soul or within our own self. But if you look at the world itself, right, how do, you, how do we make maps, right? We have to actually go up high in the sky and we have to start to, we have all this technology that does all these things to see how the landscape looks. And I forget what it's called. I used to know the name. If you guys know the name, please tell me. Um, where they go and they take pictures. And now we have Google Earth and all this stuff. And we can start to see how the landscape looks. But based on that, they create maps. If you fly in a plane, right, and you see the way that a society is constructed, it's mapped out a specific way. And it's kind of interesting because you can see the straight lines. You can see sometimes there's big circles. I mean, you have ancient civilizations who did it on the solstice, right? They, they constructed these big things, right, perfectly. And when you look at it from the sky, they look like big mandalas. They, the, the construct of the landscape. 
And how, and so when we start to map out things, now we know where they're at, right? We know how to get there. So it's kind of like, oh, if I want to go get my favorite waffles, then I know exactly how to drive there. I know how to get there. I know how to pick out the waffles. I know how to eat the waffles. So I can go to this location and I know where it's at. Now, pretty cool, right? If we didn't have maps, if we didn't have those maps, it would take us longer maybe to figure out how to get there. We'd have to do it some other way. We'd have to remember the landscape or see what the landscape looks like. Or yeah, I remember that tree. And I remember this before we had roads, before we had maps, before we had Google, Google Earth. <laughs> our Google Maps, whatever it is. We didn't know how to get there. We were we would be lost, right? Think about, okay, here's another one. Think about Moses, right? When he took the people out of Egypt and they went and they were just, I, I like talking about that one. They were just lost. They didn't have a map of the landscape. So they were just circling in the desert because they didn't have a map. They didn't know they were lost. Okay, now apply that to your internal world. Sure, we know how to go get our waffles. But do you know what's living inside of you? Do you know the map of your own self? When something's going wrong, do you know how to dig deep within to find that point internally to help you overcome the traumas, the grief, the hurt, the pain, the suffering? Do you have a map of what that looks like? Most people are like, what? No. Some people don't even know that they're suffering or hurting, right? Are they, are they, <laughs> they put, um, we know how to get to the waffles, that's for sure. <laughs> Cheers to that, Katia, that's hilarious. <laughs> so your map, what does your map look like? I have a map of my soul. I have a map of what my internal world looks like. And it's it's a key for me. When I look at it, I understand it completely, fully, wholly. Now, when people look at it, they may not even understand it. I can explain it. I can tell you exactly how it operates within me. That took digging deep within my own subconscious, unconscious, conscious, mind. I had to dig deep. So I know myself better than anybody knows me. And it's kind of funny because, well, I'm not even going to go there. This is where the grumpy old man comes out and he has no place in spirit and coffee. <laughs> know yourself. And you it doesn't have to be for everybody. You're not for everybody. I'm not for everybody. And that's quite all right. I've said this over and over again. I'm not everybody's cup of tea. I'm not everybody's cup of coffee, you know? And that's okay. But you have a map within yourself. That map is critical to your well being, it's critical to the transcendence. If you're looking to create your divine purpose, you have to be able to map out your internal world. What does your consolation look like? What does it look like? I, I just, it's funny to me because I'm reading Carl Jung and I'm like, oh, I get all this stuff, but he's wrong. <laughs> Okay, I'm saying he's wrong as a judgment for my own map. And I shouldn't say he's wrong, but I'm an, I should say my map doesn't look like his. And and I feel that there's components missing. And I and this is why and this is another thing that I'm going to rant about. This is why I believe certain people get popularized in 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 media because there's misdirection or part of the story is told and not the whole story. Or they give you part of the information, but then you're over there looking like it's going in circles, trying to find the next answer and you can't do it. Or you apply it to your life and it partially works. This is why these manifestation and abundance things don't work for everybody because there's so much information missing from it. But they make a ton of money. And the abundance people that are making all this money and riches, they know the secret, but they've left out a big part of it. <laughs> They don't want you to be as wealthy as they are. 
<laughs> let me just let me give you just a, a little bit of a, a drop of what it is. And I'm not saying that that's what Carl Jung did. I'm just saying that there are some things there that are missing. I can already tell you that. I can already see it. So in order for us to connect to our internal map and understand our internal map of the soul, we have to start looking within. If you don't look within and apply the work, it's not going to happen. It's not something that you can find outside of you. It's internally in you, right? And the closest person that I can say to what I believe is what I feel is Walter Russell, who did such a phenomenal job of really breaking down. Now, he was a physicist and he left academia uh, because they, of course, didn't allow the esoterics, the alchemy to exist within the arts because they knew that if it did, it would get out to the public. And if it got out to the public, then people would start to awaken to the control and manipulation that academia was trying to put the people under. Okay. And so literally Walter Russell still published his work. And when you look at the way he's mapped out the soul, I feel like it's a, a closer depiction, but when you look at it, it's kind of high, hard to decipher. Now his thing is hard to decipher, but I feel a closer connection to the way that he did it. So you can go and look at Walter Russell. He has uh, these amazing books um, that I haven't 100% delve into, but I understand when I look at it, I can understand what he's talking about because what the depiction is, is the internal process of probably, I would say, extremities. We can start from like the polarity, right? Um, which this is where I say Young is incorrect. He does this and he's using, and here's the thing, Young didn't discover it. He's using alchemy, the principles of alchemy. If you use the principles of alchemy, um, then, um, or tarot, look at tarot. Tarot is a really good process that shows what is natural law? How does it actually operate? And it's pretty simple and it's numerology. So if you look at numbers, right? We start with the fool, which is zero. That's like the nothing. It's like the, the, I know nothing. I don't know what I don't know. And so I'm just, I'm, I'm a fool. Okay. It's like ignorance is bliss, right? You're just sort of like, oh, I don't know what's going on kind of thing. And you're loving life. But then one happens, right? And the magician is one. And when we look at one, right, it's what's available to us is everything. When we step into one, there's a point of reference in that one. That point of reference has all the tools it needs to create what it wants to create and shape. Then we go into the two. Well, here's where I think things go wrong. And it could be the depiction that the guy did, but he did a one to the two like that. And that's, I think that process is incorrect. Number one, <laughs> rather than it being from a one to a two, I believe it's from a one to a two, not from a one to a two, from a one to a two. The process doesn't happen linear like that and separate this way. So first of all, the model that we get when people do that is a pyramid like this. Because out of the two is three. And now we have this triangle. Incorrect. It, I believe it's wrong. Now it is correct. I, I shouldn't say it's wrong. I believe that it's correct only in the physical world. But in the map of the soul, I believe that it's incorrect and it needs to be flipped upside down. So, okay, so maybe this is, <laughs> but here's the deal. Okay, basically what I'm saying is that when you understand the depiction, right? <laughs> when you understand the depiction of the soul in your own internal world and you do the work and you apply it, you can look at other people's charts and go, mm, not necessarily. The split doesn't happen from here to here unless you're in a three-dimensional time space. The split happens from here to here. See, it goes like this and it, and we even have this, which is a huge symbol, right? We have the two circles and then the middle is the fish, right? And I think that has to do with Christ, but we separate and we have here. And now 
drop here, it births something new. Something else drops here. So now we have this to that. Something new births out of this incubation here. So in here is incubating a new thing, a new birth that can drop here. And we have, tr tr that's the soul map. On the reverse flip is the body map. The body map says, tr 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 and then here. Okay. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> um, but you get into this stuff and some people are going like, wait, what? what are you talking about? So I'm just saying, know yourself, know your own internal soul map. OK, all you got to do is actually reach internally and understand and you can map it out. I have a whole map of my own. And I didn't even realize that Carl Jung did this. So now I'm going, how does this map that he created relate to even my map? And what do I feel is missing from this? map he and he didn't want people to get this information um he wanted to keep it quiet but they published the work in the red book um and for me that's how i feel i feel like it's mine i don't really want to put it out there but i'm talking that you have your own and that you can figure it out for yourself if you are committed to the work but guess what it takes a lot of work it doesn't just take listening to things you got to apply it in line with D's hydroglyphic monad. I'll have to check out what that is. I don't know what that is. Maybe I do. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> There's so much to know, right? It's like the never ending story. Or Alice in Wonderland, right? The rabbit hole just continues to go and everything seems weirder and weirder and stranger and stranger as you go down the rabbit hole. Um, I want, oh, Linga, hi, I didn't even see you kid on here. You wanna see it, damn it. <laughs> yes, Linga, we can we can work on that. For for people that are truly on a journey, um, then you know, you all can um connect with me and you know, eventually I you know feel that people there are people who get to understand this information a little bit deeper, but you have to be committed because you could screw up your life, not mine. You can really mess up your your life and your mind. And that's why people tend to shy away from this because you have to fully commit. You can't just partially commit. You'll partially screw your mind up. Like there's people who can go crazy and have gone crazy. Um, you know, I don't want to say Aleister Crowley went crazy, but he might have went crazy. <laughs> and I think that some of these individuals, right? <laughs> Some of these individuals um, that we see right now that are, you know, trying to dictate what we should be doing with our life um, know this information and they're applying it and they're using it for their own benefit, which is manipulation. And part of that is they're going crazy. Some people go crazy. So you got to be very careful. It's why I try to keep this very just light as much as I can on spirit and coffee. But the rabbit hole is never ending um and when you commit and you create the own soul of the map right right she said i don't want to know ignorance is bliss uh yeah um there's a lot of people right now that are saying that that don't want to know and want to and want to not see what is happening or going on because it's a responsibility once you know right as i Lots don't want to know, as in lots don't want to know. Yeah, it's 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 a responsibility. Um, but as you understand this information for yourself, you don't have to teach others. You don't have to let people what you know, right? I, I'm a teacher naturally and internally want to share information and wisdom. And my purpose is to leave a legacy of wisdom. So I'm teaching this stuff. And so sometimes it's kind of like what well, over our heads, just like Jung was over people's heads and they're and they're still trying to analyze what he's doing because they're analyzing what he what was his. <laughs> they need to go and analyze what's theirs. <laughs> I'm like, stop analyzing what he said and go figure yourself out. <laughs> Why don't you do that? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's terrible. Stop, Natalie. 
if they did, if scientists started to focus on themselves, right? And I think this is happening in transpersonal psychology, which they're all pissed off about, right? They're like, oh, you guys are not scientific enough. And you guys are, oh, you guys aren't using a scientific method. And this, and I'm like, yeah, they are. They're using themselves <laughs> as the scientific <laughs> method, <laughs> which is what we should be doing. They're applying it to their own self. They just don't want to look at themselves. They'd rather look externally to find answers than look internally to find answers. But the longevity of looking internally, it lasts longer, right? It, it, that's why Thoth and all these great leaders are never, they're, they're never going to go away. The Christ, right? The Buddha, <laughs> Thoth, um, you know, even these spiritual teachers now today, like Gandhi, Mother Teresa, we're looking at all these people and they understood that science, you've got to look internally, not externally. And they say it over and over again. Like it's, it's, it's a simple process, but then people hear it and then they're like, they don't apply it. And then they, they're like, now nah, we can find the answers through quantum physics or through physics or through um, repeated studies that we put people in a lab and we try to uh, recreate scenarios over and over again. And those scenarios, um, if they don't play out exactly right, then it can't be scientific. It just can't be. Then there's things they can't explain. And, and, and it's because <laughs> everything's internal. Just look inside you. Know who you are. Or don't. It's up to you. It's a choice, right? Hi, love. Hi, Jazz. Let's see. That is true. Whoop. So what do we have? Um, that is true. There's a lot of ego in peer review process. Oh, yeah. And not only that, it's like, who are the homies? Who Whose work's going to get through, right? And then they're the ones who are constructing what we see in society today. That's really what happens. It goes to the ivory tower and nobody even reads those peer, those peer articles are what are instructing what pe what should be happening today, right? <laughs> and we just follow it as truth. But if you started to dig within yourself and find your own internal truth, you can see where the lies are. It's very obvious. You're like, whoa, what? <laughs> no more. <laughs> I will not. Must always come up with the same conclusion to be a theory. Yeah. And the scientific method. You're absolutely right. I'm glad I caught you on here today, Miss Lady. I'm glad that you came on here today. Um, so, yes, it's it's the scientific method. It's crazy. Now, is it necessary? Yeah. I mean, part of it is, okay, like, I'm not going to say it's bad, but we overdo. I was even thinking about it this morning. I was like, we overdo it. We overindulge. And that is the part of the human mind that is I want to say sick I don't know if that's the right word but I want to say it's sick it's sick in that we um right we live in too much extreme right and that's what Buddha said don't don't live in the stream find the find the middle path so we call it the sins right if you looked at the sins it's really just living in extremes right Gluttony is just like eating too much. It's like overdoing it, right? Lust is too much sex or sloth is being too uh, slothish, not doing nothing, right? So we look at the sins like envy. That's just uh, too much wanting to look a certain way or, or vanity or all of those things are just too extreme. That's really what it means. It just means find the middle. It doesn't mean don't do that at all. That's the other extreme where you suffer from that too. So in this three-dimensional time space, we have to learn how to maneuver through both. But we can't understand that unless we know ourselves. Does envy live in you? Does vanity live in you? Yes. Okay, now that I accept it that it lives in me, now how do I maneuver with it? How do I work with it? That is the map of the soul. It's understanding how to maneuver through these energies that exist within you and understanding where and how they derived within you so you have a myth story you have a connection to something greater than yourself it transcends time and space you are the interdimensional being it's not just the chosen few but the few will choose it it's for everybody but not everybody's going to come to it see it's there 
it's there for you, but not everybody's going to choose it. Very few will walk the path. That's where that next parable comes from, right? It's easier to put a camel through the head of a needle than it is for someone to walk this path. People would rather stay ignorant. They'd rather choose ignorance because it's not an easy path. And it's not. It's for everybody, but not everybody wants it. Life is God, God's abstract art. Yes, it is beautiful art, isn't it? We always try to objectify. No, <laughs> don't objectify God's art. I like that idea. It's like, <laughs> why are you objectifying? Instead of being like <laughs> objectifying women or men, right? We objectify the mother. Ugh. Everything has to be a specific way that's against the flow of the universe. We taught self-limiting uh, beliefs, yep, and that we try too hard, period. We are the end, <laughs> not a means to an end, fact. Yeah, um, obstacles, let's see what John says. Okay, the nature of spirit's journey is that of the internal journey, not found somewhere outside the self. The two laboratories of alchemy, esoteric, exoteric, yes, absolutely, two paths that converge in the, um, the mo moistness of time, yes. Incredibly important point, the obstacle is the way, um, let's see, you wrote somebody, absolutely, zero, equal, or zero equals to the secret equation of existence. Yes, it is. <laughs> Which is interesting, right? Um, so, uh, super awesome uh, conversation, and I actually have to go. I have a test to take, and I have to get on this training. Boo, I'd rather be here <laughs> with you guys talking about this stuff. But just remember, you have a, a soul. You have a map soul. So figure out what that is if you choose to. Guess what? It's going to take a lot of time. It doesn't just happen overnight. Well, it could happen overnight, actually. I shouldn't say that because God's timing is the timing. If it's something that is for you and that you're calling to, it could happen overnight. You could get this complete download of your internal psyche and map and what's going on. And you can connect to your um what I call the, so it's the microcosm, right? You can connect to the microcosm overnight um, and, and understand what's happening at the micro and the macrocosm and how the two interconnect into you. So possible, it is possible, right? Anything's possible with God. Um, so, but if you want it, right? And that's for those individuals that are seeking to understand their internal world and have a map so that they can maneuver through it right so that they can go get the waffles out when they want them <laughs> okay so there you have it uh i love you guys so much thank you for joining me cheers to you salute to you blessings love light goodness um know that you're a badass and please pray that i pass this test because i suck at tests okay that's just no i don't i don't suck at tests i'm gonna pass this test and i'm gonna ace it 100 percent that's <laughs> you passed. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Taz. I appreciate that. All right. So I'm going to go. Love you guys. Have a great day. And I will see you all tomorrow. Oh, bye.